Hello and welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 122, which is about translations. This video should be fairly short. I'll cover what translations are and how you actually set them up and get them working inside of analysis services. So the first thing is what are translations? Well, they allow a cube to actually present metadata and in some cases actual data in different languages. And the metadata includes things like the name of the cube, the name of the measure groups, the name of the measures, the names of the dimensions, the names of all the attributes, and so on. And later you'll see that when I get into dimensions themselves, if the caption is something that is being pulled from the database, I can actually pull uh, different languages from that and change that on the fly. So you will see examples of that. Now the important thing to note here is that nothing is automatically translated. There is no Star Trek Universal Translator. This is all stuff that you have to do. You have to type it in or someone in your organization has to type it in. Some of that is done in the cube at design time. Some of it can be done in the dimension tables and I will show you the breakdown of where that occurs. But nothing is automatic. Now switching is automatic. That is based on the locale ID or the LC ID of the computer. Uh, this happens to be Windows 7 that I'm running, but if you go into the control panel, then you, of course, have a region and language. And within that, it will bring up and show you, of course, what your current location is, and you can change that. So it will be based on whatever the setting is for the locale ID uh, of that current computer. So the switching is automatic, but you have to have already entered all of the translations. And notice another important piece of this is that currency is not automatically converted for you. That is something that you have to set up later. That will be the, the, uh, the subject of a whole different video later. Now, the first thing I want to talk about are cube translations. There are translations for the cube itself and then translations for the dimension and I'll show you both of those here, but let's start with cube translations. This is translating only metadata. The measures, the data in the measures themselves are not, the data is not touched. So typically that would only be currency. I've already said that's not converted, but this has nothing to do with measure values. This are just items such as the name of the cube, name of the measure groups, name of the measures, names of the dimensions. Again, these would be cube dimensions, not database dimensions. Names of actions and KPIs and so on. So this here, uh, this, this piece is very simple and only will be the translated names uh, for the metadata. So let's actually get into analysis services and take a look at how you set up these cube translations. So here I have a cube that is called Simple Sales. It just has three measure groups as you can see, internet sales, reseller sales, and sales quota. And while you can't see the full text, on every cube there is in fact a translations tab, which you can see here. Going to it, they all start off with a default language, and of course that's based on the locale ID of the person creating the cube. And at this point, the default language is there. I can add a new language with this button. This is a new translation, and it then asks me to pick what translation I want. And because I already have some examples made up, I will pick Spanish. And you can see there are a number of Spanish options for different countries. I will pick Spain. Now once this occurs, it just adds this Spanish Spain here and allows me to type in these different elements. And it, I don't know them all, so I'm just going to leave this as simple sales. But for example, this would be the measure group name internet sales. And with that I could type in the Spanish translation for internet sales. So in this case I happen to know what it is. And that is the text you see here. A little copy and paste is how I know what it is. So I'm going to pause this and just fill out a couple of other values and then we'll move on. So, so here I have entered the text for internet sales amount as well as the client or customer I should say and product dimensions. Now here you see the measure groups then the measures within those and the dimensions. 
If I show you the full-blown AdventureWorks sample, you'll notice that there's a lot more to it. You can see here the cube name, the measure groups, the measures that I just had. You can then see the dimensions in the particular cube. But then you'll notice that there are perspectives, there are KPIs, there are actions, there are name sets, and calculated members. So all of those can be given a new caption in a different language. And what this means is that if someone connects to this particular cube now with that locale ID, then they will see instead of the, uh, the words internet sales amount, they will see the Spanish translation for that if their locale ID, of course, is set to Spanish in Spain. So that's very simple. That is the cube translations. It really is only captions for all of those items I just talked about. So let's leave this and I'll come back to it and we'll, we'll work with dimensions where there's actually a lot more you can do. And one of the dimensions that I wanted to translate was product. So I, I have that one here and we'll come back and work with that with the dimensions. So when working with dimension translations, again, you can translate the metadata, basically the captions, the names of all these different items, dimension names and uh, member names and so on. But really one of the big keys here is that you can translate some of the data. Now remember, we're not talking about facts here, so we're not talking about currencies or counts or anything, but we're talking about basically the labels. So if you have a product name, uh, then that name can be translated into another language. Same thing with a product description and so on. Now the key here is that those are just other columns. In the dimension table, you typically have a product name and a product description well, then you would have a, a Spanish product name and a Spanish product description and a French product name and a French product description and so on in whatever languages you have. So the translated value for data is going to be a column in the dimension table and you'll be able to map to that when you set up the translation. So let's go back to analysis services and take a look at setting up those dimension translations. So here I will go to the product dimension. Again, that's the one I said I was going to pick on a little bit. And notice that just as the cube has a translations tab, dimensions also have one. So if I go to translations, I have to do the same thing here. I have to create a new translation. And again, I want to stick with the theme of Spanish in Spain. And now again, I simply type in the translations for these. So it's easy to see, okay, I'll just set the caption, but now let's take a look. Uh, I'll add some more captions and then we'll take a look at actually changing the data value that's coming out uh, of a dimension table. Now what I have done here is I have added some labels. Now understand what I've done here. These are the hierarchies and these are the names of the levels. So all I've done is change the caption so far. I haven't changed any data. So the first thing I did was translate the name of this hierarchy, product categories. I then translated the all products just as I had done above. And then I changed the caption for the product category, subcategory, and then the product name. Now again I haven't changed any data yet. And notice that in this case, I followed best practices. I hid any attributes that were part of a multi-level hierarchy. However, in this case, you probably want to show all attributes, and there's a button here to do it on the toolbar, or you can just right-click, and there is a toggle that turns that on and off. So if I show all attributes, you'll see, for example, here is the product name. So for the product name, I'm, I'm using the key as the, the key value, but then the product name as the display. So here for the caption, if I move out here, you'll notice that I have a button that I can press and that opens up and asks me, first of all, I can translate the caption itself, uh, product name, which I think I still have in here. And then it wants to know, is there a column that holds that particular value? Now, if that value, if that column is not here, as it is not in this case, then you simply have to go back in and add it to the DSV. Hopefully that is uh, something you'd be very familiar with at this point. So let me go over here and find product and uh, add the, that uh, particular column in here very quickly. 
Okay, so originally I had a simplified view of product and I just replaced it with the actual product table. And you'll notice there's some columns in here. There's the Spanish product name and the French product name. And then if you keep going, uh, there are some others. Uh, there's a French description, Chinese description, Arabic, Hebrew, Thai, and some additional ones. But now if I go back to my product dimension at this point, and I hit the ellipses now with product name, you'll see that all of these others do come up. And so since this particular one uh, I've set to Spanish, I'll come down and find Spanish product name. And I need to go ahead and add that uh, translated caption back in here. And this will now, it, it shows the icon here telling me that I'm pulling this from a table instead of just having typed in a value. And the red squiggles here you see are just because my view changed English product name to product name. So I'll simply go and set those attributes to use the English product name column instead of uh, what they were before, just product name. So now at this point, I'm ready to deploy my cube. And once deployment uh, has finished, then I need to fully process it since I didn't have it set to process here. And I'll pause this while that's happening. So once processing has finished, how do you go about looking at this? Well, I will connect with the browser and you'll notice that this is the, it says product categories here in the hierarchies. And if I expand this, I see all, all the English values that I would expect. Well, remember that uh, it's based on the locale ID. So I could change that on the whole computer or I have the option up here in the browser under default to change mine to any language. Now, if I pick a language that I didn't translate for, it just stays in its default language, whatever it was created in. But now if I scroll down and find Spanish in Spain, then you'll notice it changes the name of the hierarchy. It changes the name of the total. And here I didn't put in the Spanish uh, category name and Spanish subcategory name. I don't even know if this cube has that, but then notice that the actual model names, it did in fact translate those for me. Well, this is just the dimension. Obviously at this point, I could go look at the cube and do the same thing. So again, on the cube browser, I will start off by seeing this as being all in English, but then I have a language option to change here. So I will come down and very quickly uh, grab the internet sales amount for this. I will grab the product categories hierarchy and I'll just leave it as that and I'm still of course working in the default language so let's change that to Spanish Spain and notice of course it changes some of the names I didn't change everything but it changes here's the new measure group name you can see the new names for one of the measures, which is over here in the grid. Of course, it changes the dimension name, the hierarchy name. Within that, again, if I expand this, I will see the translated names here. Again, it hasn't done anything with the currency, but you can see what these other translations look like. So in summary, translations are really a very powerful way to make the cube accessible to people in multiple countries who speak different languages. And it's all based on the locale ID that I showed you, the, the base setting in Windows of uh, what their location happens to be. It will then automatically switch to a translation if one exists for that. But again, nothing is automatic here. You have to enter all of it. You saw in the cube, you just had to manually enter all those captions. Same thing with the dimension. But then for the data values, if you had a column that had the translation already in it, then you could pull that and show that as part of the data. So with that, that ends the discussion on translations. Thank you very much.